Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. My name is Via Williams. I'm the director of growth for Ben Kinney Companies. What that means is I lead eight Keller Williams franchises in Washington State. I help lead our mortgage title and escrow, and we have all sorts of really cool companies uh, that we have. And we do real estate training webinars every single week. We are uh, very consistent. And we pick, I, I personally curate every single guest and I pick guests that are doing business right now, literally in the last few weeks so that we can have you guys walk away and take away things you can use right away. So without further ado, I am just uh, pulling this up. I have got two incredible guests that I pounced on a couple of weeks ago because uh, there, there's a couple of us in a group. And I said, look, who here is getting listings? Crickets. Who here, who here has a listing business that's up? Crickets. And then these two jumped on and said, actually, we're doing fantastic. We're getting a ton of listings. In fact, both of these guests today, they're, they're on par with what they did so far. They're pacing what they did in 2020, and they had record years in 2020, and their buyer business is down. So they're actually doing crazy good doing taking listings. And most agents I'm talking to right now are not speaking that language. So I um, convinced them that, that they had to come on. I made them come on, like literally made them come on. And we're just going to find out what they're doing and how, and we're going to, we're going to, you know, drill down and find out uh, what we can learn from them. So my first guest, and it's just, there's been no particular preference except for Vanessa, you are on your right on my left. So we're going to, we're going to go left to right today. <laughs> um, Vanessa Pollock, the beautiful Vanessa Pollock from New Jersey, right? From the yes, yes, New train, Jersey. Line, train line town. That's and right. So, yep. And so last year you did, you served 186 families and closed about 102 million in sales volume, which is uh, outstanding, really outstanding. Thank um, you. I think one of the cool things about you, Vanessa, is I know you have a tie. You work with a lot of Broadway um, actors and musicians. Isn't that, isn't that the case? Because your husband's a yep. Broadway star. Yep, my husband is a Broadway star, and half of our team is comprised of Broadway professionals who have made their way into real estate because the pandemic shut that whole industry down. And so, yeah, we've got tons of ties to the performing arts for sure. Talk about people that can understand scripts, right? Right. <laughs> and scripts and have the biggest, best work ethic you've ever seen on the planet. It's unbelievable. Nights and weekends, right? Nights and weekends. There's no blinking of an eye, right? No. That's no. A really good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't know this till I got your bio. I didn't know. So you appeared in two seasons of the real estate, real estate show Bought and Sold on HGTV. Yes, I did. <laughs> I don't even know what that show is, but that's important. Well, you wouldn't know because it aired before there was even HDTV. Like it's, oh. <laughs> we didn't even have flat screens when that was on the air. So it was a long time ago. I was about a year and a half into the business. I was as green as they come. And what better time than to be put on national TV with the entire you know world watching how you conduct your business. It, it taught me a lot though. And um yeah, it was an exciting time for sure to figure out who I wanted to be within the industry and helped shape the the early part of my career for sure. Yeah, that's really cool. So you you have the Pollock Properties Group. You guys have donated almost a quarter million dollars to local and global charities through a couple initiatives and foundations. Yeah. And we'll, we'll definitely give those uh, links a little later on uh, for you, Vanessa. Yeah. And on a national level, you're the creator of Care, Serve, Give of the care sort of give business model and you teach and train and speak to audiences all around the country. You yep. have three beautiful children. I see pictures of your beautiful children and yeah. you are, uh, you live in New York city. Sorry. You live scratch that you live in South orange, New Jersey. I do. Yep. And uh, that's where you do your business. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And you said you had to like, tell us you have to do this. I was like, please pick me, pick me. <laughs> so I'm honored that you asked me and thrilled to be here and love this opportunity. So thank you very, very much for including. Uh, thank you for saying that. That's lovely. Chris Craddock, I, I, I think you just have a fascinating background. I, I love it because, you know, you came from the ministry, right? You were a pastor. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think, yeah, and I just love your your sort of your your career biography, if you will, that you started flipping homes to bring in more income for your twenty five kids that you have. You know how many? 
<laughs> How many kids? Let's figure do you out what, if I can figure out what causes it. You know, then we can stop that, right? <laughs> like, <it's> just... <laughs> you have six beautiful children, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You have six beautiful children, and 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 that's a lot of mouths to feed. And so you started flipping properties because you know being a pastor isn't known for you know wealth building necessarily, right? Not usually. And then, <laughs> not usually. I would think not. And then you, you eventually just, you know, crossed over and, and went into real estate full time. And I think what's cool about it, Chris, is like you have one of the, you know, largest teams in the nation and in 2020, you brought in over $5 million in gross commission income and um, sold over 160 million in volume in the Washington, DC, Virginia area. That's a lot. That's a huge business. So kudos to you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been, it's been a heck of a ride, you know, just, I mean, just going from where, I mean, I, I tell this story because it's just amazing to me, but literally 10 years ago over Christmas time, I just couldn't even believe it. We're building our dream house right now. We've had a, just a heck of a run financially. And, uh, 10 years ago around Christmas time, I live right near NIH and, uh, somebody told me about this. I was trying to like get, go to NIH to sell my blood for 300 bucks to buy Christmas presents for our family, you know, cause oh. that was like where we were like ministry wise, which by the way, if you have people in the nonprofit, in the ministry, missionaries, any of those people, and you're doing well, guys, don't be cheap, cut checks, help people that are helping people. Right. Like, so, so anyway, it was, uh, it was, uh, a huge thing. And, you know, now I look at where, where we are financially and it's just, it's just so amazing. I mean, massively blessed and, um, and it's just crazy. I, I love America. I love, I love where we are, where anybody can go from needing to sell their blood for, for money to, uh, to, you know, being a multimillionaire many times over, you know, in, in a period of a decade. Uh, and it's just, it's just incredible. So I love, I love it. I love that. I love that story. I, I think, you know, also what I love about you, Chris, is, I mean, you you know you've been married for twenty plus years. You, you you're committed family guy, and you you know you 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 walk your talk. I, I really I really respect that. That's great. So you're in the Washington D.C. you know metro area, and Vanessa, you're in New Jersey, which is really good for us over here because you know I'm in Seattle, and I always like getting perspectives. And I also have found that it's kind of universal. <laughs> you know, kind of what works one place typically typically works on another. So, you know, here's the thing, guys, uh, says no agent ever, and I quote, my listing business is up in 2021, except you two. There's a very, no, I know a couple have, but there's a very precious few who are saying that. So, so let's start with you, Chris. What kind of are specifically two to three things that you've done to get your listing inventory up? And feel free, Chris, to kind of walk us through a little bit about your business and how you work with investors if you think that'll help everybody understand. Sure, well, I'll start with the boring one, the one that everybody's gonna roll their eyes because they always hear it, you know, but like, I mean, you know, you, you find the money in the mundane, right? Like that's that's where it is. And everybody wants the the secret, you know, silver bullet. But here's the boring one that, that actually is where a lot of our, our business comes from is we ask for referrals. Like we ask people for it. You know, you know, there's a quote that says you don't have because you don't ask, right? Well, we ask, you know? And so that's, that's one of the things. And we just had this happen where um, we told them what our process was um, ahead of time because it's all about expectations when you set the expectations. So we told our sellers what our process was. We, um, we always list on a Wednesday. We don't accept an offer until a Monday. Um, and we get multiple offers and then we bid it up how we negotiate. We don't, you know, we just, anyway, we go through the whole process of what we do. You know, we don't want escalations. We want, you know, highest and best, make them negotiate against themselves. Um, all of the other pieces there. And we say, this is where the comps are. And this is where we think we could get you. Um, but we always want to go a little higher than where they think we can get them. Cause if we say, Hey, we're going to get you to 550. And you know the comps are 525, and they get to 540. They're going to be disappointed, right? So you always want to give them, say, hey, if we could get you to 535, and the comps are 525, then they feel great when you get to 550. Like my agent killed it for me. And then, and you always say ahead of time, if we do the if thens, right? If we do this, then would you be willing to um, tell all your friends when they're buying and selling? And I always use this this script as well. Um, and it's the reticular activating system whole idea. It's like, so I bought my dream truck last year, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's a Ford Raptor, right? So whenever I'm driving down the street and I see a Ford Raptor, I'm like, ah, oh, Raptor, 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 you know, like whatever it is, like whatever you're driving, when you drive down the street, you're going to see the car, you're going to see the car that you're in. And so what I say to them is, 
and like I'll tell that story and then I'll just say, hey, so it's the same thing when you're buying and selling real estate. Every time you talk about it, you're going to find everybody else that's buying and selling real estate because that's what you're thinking about. And so when you do, if we de deliver, will you be willing to make an introduction? And I literally have a text on my phone just today with a new introduction. I had one yesterday and another one today. So, so literally just th that is one of the things that happens. And I know it's boring to, to just say that it's not like some like new secret sauce. Um, but it's, it's like the age old you know, thing, um, but it, but it works. So trust me, just ask for it, ask for it, ask for it and set it up well. Okay. So let's dive down on that. Let, let's really dive down. When in the process do you ask for the referral? Um, at the listing appointment. So I'm not going on tons and tons and tons of appointments these days. Um, but I did go on one yesterday and, um, you know, I was sitting at the kitchen table and, and we talked through the numbers. We talked through like our process, what, what he, you know, what the whole thing, you know, went through it. And then I said exactly what I said to you, to him. Um, I just said, you know, I, I like, I let's role play it, Chris, let's role play it. You and I are across the table, right? You're across the table. Yeah. Okay, Chris. So, so what, what you think we should list our home at uh, whatever you said, uh, it, let's just go into role play. Yeah. So, so uh, via, you know, I, I, I do believe that we can get you, um, you know, obviously the comps are right around uh, 325. I'm almost positive that if we list at 325, we're, we're likely going to be at least a 335. And who knows, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Do you feel comfortable with that number? Yeah, I feel, I feel good. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so with our process, we always list on a Wednesday. You know, I, 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 this is what I'm all about is making sure we negotiate. Well, this is part of our value to you is that we we're going to make sure you're in the best hands. So we always list on a Wednesday and then we will not accept an offer until a Monday. And wh what happens is most agents will submit these escalation agreements, but do you know what an escalation agreement is, is all about via? Can you explain it to me, please? Sure. So it basically says, um, I'm willing to pay 1500 bucks or 2000 bucks or $5,000 higher than the last offer. And, and you have to show the last offer so that they are paying, um, paying that much more than the last offer. So, so it, it sounds great, right? Like it sounds like a great idea, like, Oh, cool. They're willing to pay more, but you know what, you know who that escalation addendum protects? No, it, it protects the buyer. So in, uh, in negotiating, there's one of my favorite books that I've ever read. And if you ever, if you ever get excited and want to read a, a book, it's called Never Split the Difference by, um, by a former FBI negotiator. And one of the things that he always talks about, one of the principal rules in negotiating is you always want people to negotiate against themselves. So if we get rid of the, uh, if we get rid of the um, escalation addendum, they're no longer negotiating against another offer. They're negotiating against themselves. Right. And so when they're blind, sometimes they'll go from from saying, you know, 335 to 360 when the next highest offer is at 340 or 335 to 375, something crazy. And so what we want to do is get them to negotiate against themselves. So that is why we get rid of the escalation addendums. We make sure that they're negotiating against themselves and we get you the highest amount of money. So uh, do you feel comfortable with our strategy and our program? Yeah, I, I just had some questions. So if we list on a Wednesday, I mean, what if someone really wants to give us an offer that's like 335 on say Thursday or Friday? It just feels crazy that we wouldn't take that. Yeah, yeah. And and we could listen, I'm not, I never want to push you to do something that that you wouldn't feel comfortable with. I'm just sharing with you what I would do for myself or if it was my mom or my brother or sister, right? Like I want to I want to just give you the advice that I would give you. I'm, I'm here to be a, a trusted advisor, um, but that is that is my my goal for you to be a trusted advisor. But I'm never going to push you to do something you don't want to do. I do believe in my experience that if we get an offer at 335 within a couple hours, one of the things that I've seen is, and you've probably seen this too. And by the way, I want a listing from this. Uh, by the way, you've probably seen this too, where somebody brags about the fact that they had they they took an offer within four hours of listing. Have you ever seen that on Facebook or social media? Yeah, yeah. It feels kind of like a lazy agent to me. Well, you know what? I This is what I think. Whenever I see that, I always think, you know what? 
that four hour offer that you just accepted just cost you $20,000 because that means there's probably a yeah. lot more people that we could beat up for you and get them to come up to the, to the right number, a, a really good number. And obviously, you know, $20,000, you know, $20,000 to a buyer over 30 years. I mean, what is that? Like maybe a hundred bucks, maybe, you know, something like that. But for you in your pocket, I mean, that's the money that you are, are setting up the next stage of your life, right? So that's a big deal. So that's why I think it's so important to, to do that um, for you. So if we're able to get to that place and who knows, I don't want to overpromise, but if we're able to do get to that 335 or more, um, would you, would you feel comfortable telling all your friends? Cause, cause what happens is you'll, uh, like, I, what kind of car do you drive again? Uh, well, I don't, it doesn't matter. Just I'm Mercedes. Say, well, <laughs> all right. So, so when you, when you, when you got into your Mercedes, did you start realizing every Mercedes on the road, especially the ones that looked like yours? Did you start seeing them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the same thing happened to me um, with my car and the same thing happens to all of our friends and clients. So a lot of our referrals come right when somebody goes under contract, because all you're going to be thinking about for the next month is real estate, right? Even when you're thinking about other things, it's going to pop into your mind of the things that you have to do or, or just the different things there. And so everybody that's going to talk about real estate is going to catch your attention, just like cars on the road do. And so what we would just ask is if we deliver on all of this, all the promises that we made, if, if you have a great smooth transaction, would you be willing to tell all your friends whenever somebody says, Hey, I'm interested to, uh, to jump over with us and, uh, and, and make an introduction. Sure. Yeah, you bet. Cool. And the last thing I'll just throw out is this. So most people get a little bit, um, feel a little bit weird about the introduction. Um, like if, if somebody just sends you some random person's number to, uh, uh, to call, they get a little bit weird about it. But I also wouldn't want you to give me their number to call them because I know that would put you in an awkward situation. So what I've found is the best way to make it so that they can respond or blow me off if they want to blow me off, you know, and, and no big deal is if you just sent us a joint text and that way they can either respond to it and not feel like it's weird calling a stranger or they can blow me off if they're not ready to talk. Would that, would you be cool with that? Yes. I love that, Chris. That's really good. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Sorry. Back to role play. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, very cool. Very cool. Well, that, that sounds great. Well, let's boom. And then, and then we're done. So. Well, that's awesome. So, so save your next, cause I asked you for a couple things. So that was a very, very good start. I'm going to shift it over to Vanessa and, and, you know, you can kind of think about your, the other things that you're doing. Uh, Vanessa, what do you think about that? Pretty cool, huh? The uh, joint text. I mean, I should sell my house and Chris should come listen. Right. I feel the same way. I actually already have a page of notes here, so. Yeah, I know, I, I'm taking notes As long too. as it comes so, to tickets to your husband's show, I'm in, come on. <laughs> right, when Broadway is back, yes, we'll all be excited to be there. <laughs> did I hear, on a side note, didn't I hear Broadway is back? Um, the union won't allow the actors back until oh. June at the earliest. The okay. uh, production of Lion King in London will reopen in July, and we're really hopeful that a lot of shows will come back in the fall. My husband's next show that's been delayed a year and then another year, um, he'll be doing a workshop in the fall, and it's slated to open a year from March, so um, a year from now. Yep. Oh, cool. Good, good. Well, that makes me happy. Um, so Vanessa, what are you doing right now specifically to get listings? Um, uh, you know, I, I'd love to say there's something I'm doing today, Wednesday, and yet I have to kind of take us in the rear view mirror a bit because Good. it's the activities we've focused on for many years pre COVID that teed us up to, um, have our listing volume increase last year and have our listing volume, we're up 50% year over year. Um, and so a, a big part of that is um, our care, serve, give motto and mission. And what we've been known for in our community for years and years and years and years is to put our clients first, 
give the very best service in our industry and also be a generosity based business that's wildly community focused. So when a global pandemic hit and people had real estate needs, I think the fear of the pandemic and the anxiety that came with the idea of I need to make a move and I don't know how to do that safely. We found that our community really gravitated to our business model and the core values of who we are and what we stand for and they felt safe with us. And, and that was really the message we kept hearing last year is, I, I believe you'll take care of me and I believe you'll keep us safe. And that it wasn't just a flash in the pan that we were doing some really community focused things during the pandemic, but that's who we'd been for, you know, forever. Um, and Vanessa, that before you move on, can you give us an idea of maybe one community focused thing you've done to just kind of give everybody an idea of what that looks like? Absolutely. So uh, let's go back a year, right? When when the pandemic hit and the first 30 days of the pandemic for all of us was bulletproofing the transactions we had at that time. Like, how do we navigate this together? And once we got through those 30 days, we definitely as a team felt that there was a lull in new listings coming on the market while we were all waiting to see what was happening in the world. And in that moment, I realized that um, we weren't going to take to the couch. We were going to continue as a team to serve our community. And it may or may not be with real estate activities on a day-to-day -day basis, but we would put our systems and our talents and our logistics um, behind what our community needed in that moment. And we knew that um, personal protective equipment for our healthcare heroes was um, so hard to get your hands on. And New Jersey and New York were the first to be hit. And so we partnered with someone in our community who was making face shields for doctors and nurses. And I jumped on Zoom with our team and I said, you know what guys, real estate will come. I know it will. And yet in the meantime, this is a need and we can meet it and we can get our sphere and our database to help us do this right now. And I knew that we needed to focus on activities. Um, and so we did, we partnered with this organization and we helped with the assembly and distribution of face shields for healthcare heroes. And at first the goal was we had requests for 4,000. Um, face shields. And then it got bigger and it got bigger. And over the course of three or four months, our team, along with our market center and our database and our sphere and our clients who came in and partnered with us, we were able to assemble and distribute over 60,000 face shields to healthcare heroes, wow. not only on the East Coast, but all over the country. And in doing that and in having our agents front porch be like a pickup place to get the equipment and then you go home and you put the shields together and then you take it to a different porch and drop it off and then somebody else picks it up and takes it to the hospital and all the moving parts of that um, our whole community came together and it really created as jason abrams was saying about the same time to the whole company he said, just if you focus on your care calls and if you if you talk to your people and they're OK, then help them know how to, like Chris said, help people who are helping people. And and if you get mind share, it will turn into market share. And so, so you would kind of like advertise this on emails, on your 33 yep. touch and just you kind of made sure that all of your channels were were like showcasing and and yep. not only showcasing and offering people a way that they could, in, you know. Yep join in with you. Hmm. Yeah, it was very grassroots on our social media, on our Friday newsletter that's been going out for 14 years now. And that's me that's dinging. I know you hear the dinging and that's that's my sound issue. So I apologize for that distraction. Um, but it really, we just plugged into all of our existing communication channels and, and what was about new listings ultimately became about, hey, if you want to volunteer, here's the Google spreadsheet to fill out so we can plug you into the right piece of the system yeah. to help make this happen. And then we woke up in like June or July and the come list me's, come list me's, come list me's just started pouring in. Um, and yeah, we saw last year our, our sales volume as a team doubled over 2019. Um, mm -hmm. And honestly, we didn't do anything new in terms of lead generation, it truly became um, just taking care of our community and people then reaching out and trusting us to take care of their real estate needs. 
That's really great. Okay, so that that is a good backdrop. I'm glad you kind of went back and, and described that because you really laid a foundation. So with yeah. that said, I guess I guess my follow up question would be, what what does your communication look like with your database over the last year to make sure you do have mind share yep. and that they are coming to you? What is that? What what kind of tools and vehicles are you using, and which yep. scripts you're using, and what's that yes. in? We've had a community newsletter, like I said, going out for almost 15 years now, every single Friday. And that kind of consistency, your people Mm -hmm. get used to. And if they can count on their newsletter, they know that they can count on you for the service you're going to provide. And that newsletter is, yes, our real estate and also what we're doing in the community and what other amazing people are doing in the community. And we're also highlighting small businesses. So we've stayed in touch in that way. And then our all of our social media, We've been very, very intentional about pivoting our business in the direction of video and all things digital. Um, You know, everything has moved to Zoom and everything is super video based now. So we really are able to reach our sphere and reach our database with regular, um, as you know, as again, Jason Abrams said, he's like, give your presidential address, right? Get in front of your people and tell them what's going on. And so I will go to a Facebook live on a pretty regular basis um, and and tell people what's happening. Um, we I, I got to give a shout out to your friend and my friend, Ben Kinney, who has, you know, done this spectacular job with our website through Brivity. And we've become and you're showing it. So I'm, I'm uh, I think it's OK to talk about it. But we really uh, use the blog there to show people our market reports, um, keep them posted on what's happening in the market in that way. But well, I'd love it if you clicked on somebody on our team, if you go back to some anybody, um, and I'll just show you an example. Great, Denise Payne, she's a rock star. I don't know where her photo went, um, but scroll all the way to the bottom. And, oh, you know what? They just did a refresh of the site last week. So go back to mine, see it. See if mine works. See, guys, we didn't we didn't practice this. Um, oh, I love that. That's so all good, the way to the bottom. And what I did is towards the end of last year, I hired a staff photographer and filmmaker. So we now have a bio video about each of our agents. So you could click right there and you don't have to do it right now. Um, but from a conversion standpoint and from a communication standpoint, if I'm converting someone to a listing appointment with one of my lead listing specialists, I send them their video. like So they get to know Great. each of our agents ahead of time. I can send them the video about our closing manager. I can send them the video about our design specialist. And so taking all the communication, uh, digital and video was a really important part of things for us last year. And then you're on our blog report. Reports. So we publish these every single month, um, all the key towns in our area. And this is really what we'll do our presidential address about so that people can go back to the blog, look at um, all the data that's within here. Now, when we get a listing appointment, when somebody says, I'd like to talk to you, I like to go on Zoom first because I want them to see me without a mask. And we're all you know, masked up when we go on our appointments. But I have an initial conversation on Zoom because like we're looking at each other right now, I want them to see my smile and I want to see theirs. And I ask for permission for the pre-list package to get dropped off. And the blog report, the market reports you just saw on the blog, those are printed for their town in a branded bag with our seller guide. We've got Selling Your Home. It's a magazine that you can also get online, vpsellerguide.com, as well as a copy of our home buyer guide. Guide, um, as well as a notebook, two branded face masks, and a pen and a handwritten note. And that gets dropped at their front door. And I tell them on the Zoom, I'm going to drop off this marketing material. Please read through all of it. It's going to answer all your questions about what we do, the service we provide, and how we do it. Um, and so when I get to the house or my agent gets to your house, we can focus on you, your needs, your goals, and what we're looking to accomplish. And so it does the heavy lifting for us that we've both got it in print on their front door and they can reference it online. So yeah, you're looking at it right there. 
I include the home buyer guide in there because my script on that is I want you to see how well we educate the buyers who might be looking at your house. If they walk in the door to a public open house, I want you to feel confident that they know um, exactly how the transaction should go and has the flow. They have the flow chart. They're going to be pre-approved. We're going to take care of the buyers like we're taking you as a seller. And that really helps them understand um, that we're super learning based for our clients, both the sellers and, um, and the buyers. Well, that's incredible. In fact, and, and I want to, I want to, jump back over to Chris because it's a perfect transition, Vanessa, yeah. because what I hear you saying is you're telling your story. You're, you're telling the story and you're painting the picture of what the customer experience could look like. You're walking your talk. I loved what you said about, look, if you're consistent with an email every Friday for 15 years, you're showing them you're going to be consistent in your level of service. I actually haven't thought about that before. And it's really, really true. Chris, the reason that, that reminded me and I wanted to pop back to you is that you tell stories as a way to get business, right? I mean, that's kind of how you described it to me. You want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, um, Tatiana, you know, said this as well. But uh, yeah, Vanessa, that was, that is, that your guide is like legit. That is great. That, like, that's one of the best I've seen. And I've seen a lot of me them. Too. That was really, really good. Um, yeah, so I, I think stories sell. And so, um so yeah, that's one of the big things. Um, you know, it's it's so funny because uh, you know coming from the the Christian world, like the pastor world, it, it's it's really interesting. One of the things that that people have done like for all all of time is tell their story. They say tell, calling a testimony in like like the Christian world, right? And it's it's just your story. And then it was so funny because I remember early in my career, like I. I'm a story guy. Like, like I could tell you, tell me a topic and I'll tell you like a story that makes me laugh or makes me cry about that topic. And I just love collecting them and like sitting around with my friends and telling stories and listening to stories is like one of my favorite things on, on earth. But I also heard this early on and said that, uh, um, salespeople without testimonials will have skinny children, right? Like that's <laughs> like a huge, huge thing. And so, so we just, tell the story so that people can see it because a lot of times people have a hard time with vision. You know, I'm in the, I, I'm in the flipping world as well. And that's one of the things where, where people will walk in, you'll see like the average retail buyer, they'll walk into a house and they can't see the 42 inch cabinets. They can't, they just see the builder's grade 36 inch, like nasty cabinets. And like, they can't see what it would look like when it's all done. And so that's that whole thing. When you can paint a picture and tell a story, people can understand. And what everybody really wants is certainty. So um, with that said, I mean, one of the things that I, I was thinking about, like, I know you asked the, the, the other things and, you know, one of the things we do really well is, is working with investors and jumping into that piece. But one of the other things that I think everybody deals with, and I think that we've, we've had a lot of success with right now, a lot of sellers are not really wanting to sell because they're, they're afraid that they're going to be stuck without a place to buy. So I don't know if you, you would want to jump into that at all, because I think hundred percent. Yes. It is the number one objection everybody has trying to get inventory. So yes, yes. <clears throat> so let me walk you through what I like my process on this. So, so what I always do is you want to restate their problem, right? Like, and you want to restate it better than they state it so that you, they know you get it right. They, they're not like, Oh yeah, it's nice. You're just sitting there in your house and I'm going to be homeless. Right? Like, like you got to know. So like, usually I'll start off and be like, I'll, I'll just say, I totally understand. It is a tough market for buyers. Um, but the great thing is, um, the market is great for, for sellers. And so what we're going to do is even though I think you look really pretty and with a mug on the street corner, a uh, homeless, you'd probably make a lot of money, but that's not what we want for you. Right. And so everybody always like everybody on my team gives me a hard time because I like to make cheesy jokes, but here's the deal. As soon as you say something that they feel like is going to be any sort of confrontation, um, there's a book called Pitch Anything that I really love. It, it talks about your power frame, right? And they start to draw this line in the sand, start to create the power frame. And who has ever dealt with somebody and you've tried to tell them they're wrong once they said something? Anybody ever been there? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. We don't want to be admit that we're wrong, right? Let's be honest. Like, so people are going to do this. So you want to hit it beforehand. And as, as you're talking about them not wanting to be homeless, like, listen, I, I will not, I will fight so hard to make sure that that will not happen for you because people want certainty. What I will 
then, then I'll just do the whole street corner mug, even though you're pretty, you know, I know we don't want you on the street corner with a mug homeless. Um, you say that to make people laugh just a little bit, even if it's cheesy, like even if whatever, you just want them to smile and break that power frame. They're like the second they're, they're pushing back your toast, like you're not going to win the argument. So you need to make them laugh just a little bit, smile just a little bit. And so so then we'll just say, so listen, this is what we've done. Have you ever heard of a home, home of choice contingency? And they'll say, uh, not really. What is, what is that? And we'll say, so this is what we'll do. We will get multiple offers on your property. We're going to price it well so that we get multiple offers. And with it, in this market, the great thing is when we tell a buyer to jump, they always say, how high? Right. And so what we're the way we're going to tell the buyer to jump is that they're going to write a uh, into the contract that you have 60 days to find a house that fits you perfectly or we can cancel the contract and you're not homeless. And so then breaking the role play here, the second thing that they're afraid of. And this, so the first thing is to be homeless. The second thing, and you've got to understand this, that they'll be afraid of is that their home, that, that they're going to run out of time and have to choose a house they don't like, uh, choose a house that they're not loving, in love with. And so we just say, listen, it's a home of choice contingency. So you, for any reason, you can wake up tomorrow and stub your toe and say, I don't want to move, you know, whatever. And, uh, and, and then you don't have to move, you're, you're out of it. So you're not stuck buying a house you don't want and you're not stuck, um, you know, just being homeless, we will find you exactly what you're looking for. And if you don't find it, we just cancel the contract or ask them to extend that search contingency. Does that make sense to you? And if you explain yeah. their position well, then they'll come back around and say, wow, that's, you know, that's, that's great. I didn't realize I could do that. Well, I love that. That, that was so good. And then the other, what I just posted is Vanessa, when you were talking, she just did a video on that, right? Vanessa, is that what you well, just sent us? Yeah, it was interesting. I, I, my oldest of three kids is 17 years old and I had a lot of parents with kids at their sophomore, junior, senior year of high school reaching out saying, oh my gosh, should I sell the house, cash in, rent for the next couple of years till they graduate? And it was the same. I knew if everybody was asking me that, I needed to respond to everyone. So I put the video together and thank you for sharing that. And what we have focused our people on also is we are not in the job of homelessness. We are not going to let you go homeless, right? So my two questions to people are, which causes you the most stress? Knowing how much money you could get for your house or knowing that you have your next home secured. And we'll create a, a plan based on that because stress mitigation really is my job. And everybody has different um, a different response to those two questions or where they're going to fall on that. But what I put into the video that was so important is I told everyone not to sell their house. <laughs> I said, please don't sell your house right now. Your kid deserves to be in their home to have their last few years of high school. If you go and rent for two years, you're throwing $100,000 away. And I promise you, I don't think our market's gonna tank 10% in the next two years. However, if you do decide that you want to cash in on this market, let's not rent, let's go find the ugly duckling house. Let's go find the house in this market that is not staged, is not painted, it is not marketed the way we market homes, where you walk into equity by being willing to take on the ugly duckling, strip the wallpaper, redo the floors, do a kitchen over the next couple of years, cash in now and cash in again when the kids graduate from high school. So yeah, they're going to have to make new memories in a new house. But if you really are thinking about this from an investment standpoint, that's where we need to focus our search. And it kind of went viral within a couple of community Facebook groups. I got multiple listing appointments out of it and several comments from the video, several comments came in saying, Vanessa is the one realtor who will tell you not to sell your house. <laughs> right. And, and so the trust building was really there. And so, yeah, it helped a lot of people. I helped a lot of people decide to, st to stay. And I have a very rich pipeline now for 2023 because <laughs> I know when they're all graduating from high school. And <laughs> you know, I got a listing appointment and closed on a $1.25 million home within 60 days of that video because of that video. So it's um, it can be a yes and that um, you doing the right thing for people and helping them make a smart decision uh, to stay 
and the smart decision to sell and find that next house is really what we're here for, right? Well, yeah. And, and I got an aha, you know, I'm listening to you guys and I'm thinking, okay, this webinar is on how can, how are you guys getting so many more listings? Like, how are you 50% ahead of where you were last year? And my aha is both of you guys have figured out how to overcome the number one biggest objection. You both, that, that's what, that's my aha. That, that right there, the, the how you convert that objection is yeah. I actually think part of one of your superpowers, both of you. Because both of you have a, you're very confident in it, you know, your scripts, like you're, oh, this one. And you both like dove in on that. I'm almost thinking we're going to do a whole entire webinar on this one objection, because this is the number one objection that I hear from everybody yeah. always. It is the number one objection right now. Yeah. So thank and you. I, and I just want to just say it again, because it's what comes up in the majority of listing appointments that I'm having over Zoom or in person. And every time I ask it, people go, oh, that's such a good question. Again, it's what causes you more stress, not knowing the price you're going to get for your home or not knowing what home you're going to move into next. And let's build a plan out according to that. And as soon as they understand what, what that stress is for them, we can make it, we can make it happen for them. Well, yeah, I, I love that. I, I, I love that. Um, I, I think it's really interesting. The, uh, uh, what you were saying is, is true. And I hadn't even thought about that. The fact that, um, you know, what I always say, winning in real estate comes from activity and skill, right? Even if you're a terrible, terrible salesperson, if you talk to a thousand people a day, you're going to outperform an amazing salesperson that talks to 10 people a day, right? Like just always, like that's the way it works. But then what happens if you get better at what you say and you're talking to a lot of people, then you get in a bottle, right? And it, it's really interesting because like I said, I'm, I don't, I haven't been going on tons and tons of listing appointments myself recently, just because you know, we've been, you know, leveraging the team, but I, I have been on a handful recently. And one of them, one of them was a come list me. I didn't have to earn it. Like I earned it through the relationship a long time ago. I walked in, told them what we're doing, signed it up, you know, boom. The other one, um, it was a high C on a, on the disc profile. It was interesting. The husband was an S. So for all of you guys who don't know disc, a high C would be like a, an analyzer engineer, you know, very process and detailed oriented. Yes. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, if, if you want to level up skill wise, walk in and understand in, in an instant where people are on their disc profile and you will be able to speak in terms of what they care about. So I saw the high S, which like just in talking to the husband, I saw he was a high S, which was steady, stable. And then I found out that he was an accountant, which I was just like, of course, he's an accountant in <laughs> the high S, you know, and then she was a, uh, she worked for the county doing, um, you know, checking permits and everything. So of course she was a high C, which is really funny. Um, but um, so for him, he just wanted to know what the next steps were. What are the next steps? What are the next steps? She wanted to make sure that she wasn't going to be homeless and she wasn't going to be pushed into something because she was a high C. So those were the, the two things right there. And I'll just tell you, if you guys can understand where somebody is, if they're a high D, their certainty level doesn't need to be as big as a high C, right? They just need to know that you're confident. And, and if you walk in with massive confidence, say, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. They're going to be excited about it. Hi, I, you walk in and you say, listen, it's a great market for sellers. This is going to be fun to do it together because they're interpersonal. They're, they're, they're great. They want to do it with you. You know, S, you know, obviously, you know, they want to know what's next. What's the system? Don't get caught off guard. And then C, they just don't want to be wrong. Like they don't want to, they want to know everything and don't want to be stuck in something. A high level of security is so important to them. And so I'll just tell you, when you can understand that, you're going to walk into appointments, you'll probably double or triple your conversion. Um, I, the last thing I'll throw out on that was, I still remember when I was making my calls at the beginning, my coach made me mark how many calls it took to a closed conversion and at the beginning, before I understood the disc profile, before I understood people, it was 133 phone calls, conversations, not phone calls, conversations equaled one closed deal. And after I started understanding all of that is my closing ratio went down to, it became, I think it was 31 conversations ended up being a deal. So you went just, from 133 to 31. Well, part of that is you can probably tell I'm, I'm pretty high energy. And so I'm always just kind of, going, going, going. So like my average day, 
a slow day. And I actually started doing this. My whole team leveled up when I, I started showing them my logs. I would run out. So I would have to take pictures of it on my phone log. But uh, um, my slow days, I would have a 93 conversations. And on my big days, it'd be about 127 conversations. So I would wake up and literally like just on the phone all day, all day, all day, just on the phone. And that's, that's all I was doing. And so I was able to level up really fast because, you know, the amount of activity compressed the amount of time, rate times time equals distance. My rate was high. So my time was just what the time was and it got me there faster. I love this. You guys, I, I, I've just gotten so many ahas. It's funny when, when I walk into these, sometimes I think I know what, what I'm going to learn and what everyone's going to learn. And, and, you know, and, I'm, I'm shook. Like, like, I mean, it is just like, I, I think that, I think you guys are nailing it in a lot of areas. You may not have even been aware you're nailing it in, you know, I mean, like you're, what, what's, what I'm hearing is, is you have a bunch of at bats and you've gotten those at bats because you guys are consistent and you're doing your lead gen and you're doing your database marketing and lead gen. And then when you're at those at bats, you have just learned how to overcome the golden objection. I mean, you know what I mean? And, and Vanessa, you're doing a lot with video, which I think is fantastic. And, and Chris, you're just an incredibly skilled salesperson. But what I'm hearing you say is, you know, you learn that. I mean, you, you just, you failed forward and you learn that. I think that both are aspirational, you know, for people watching, right? And both can achieve it. Vanessa, I'm getting a lot of private messages and questions on your guide. Um, are you willing to share, you know, who just who you use and how you did that? Absolutely. I built it out um, seven or eight years ago. And every year I do a refresh and a redesign. And I based the content on um, knowing that our uh, clients are on the disc and we don't know who they are yet. <laughs> so the content rolls out with the high D information within the first two pages and we, we roll it out from there. And I'll send to you later the name of the company, the graphic designers who, who do that um, with us. And I know they'd be thrilled to talk to anybody who'd um, like to have one customized for your business. Well, that'd be great. Yeah, we and we'll we'll share all this out, you guys. We're giving a lot of links, and a lot of you who are regular watchers are on our mailing list. If you're on our mailing list, you'll get an email with all of these links on it. Um. All right. So so we have a few more minutes left. Now that we've really gotten in the weeds of this, has this has this reminded you of anything else you guys are doing right now to be fifty percent up year over year in your listings? Well, Vanessa, I did you, yeah. Yeah, I'll just, because you just put it in the chat for me and I'm sending to them to you first to be sure it's okay to send them yeah, to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, so I, I put in a marketing plan overview video because what I've wanted to do is control the message and control the script and know that my agents, um, when they're in the moment with a client, can have the freedom to be in that moment and not worry about, did I say all the things in the script about the marketing plan, right? Mm -hmm. So we created an eight minute monologue that is edited with all kinds of visuals. And our system is when we go through the seller intake form, we ask all the questions and then we say to the client, great, I'm gonna go walk around the house now without you because I need to see it as a realtor without your rose colored glasses or your critical lenses on. I'm gonna absorb the house, take some notes while I'm walking through. I'd like for you to watch this video. Would you prefer to watch it on my phone or yours? Because I could text it to you right now. It may be the only time that you get them for eight minutes to stop, slow down and watch <laughs> Right. So they know that you're and, and I say, I'm going to ask you questions when I get back from looking at the house and see if you have questions, because I want to be sure that, you know, if you want a custom marketing plan that we've taken that into account. So then I text them that video link um, or I hand them my phone, depending on their comfort level. And I know that whether I'm on the appointment or Denise or Kevin or Kelly or Sherry or any of our amazing, amazing listing agents, that those clients have heard absolutely everything within our marketing plan that they can expect in terms of service. And I would just encourage everybody, it does not have to be professional. It does not have to be perfect. I've done so many things on iMovie over the years. People are used to all of it now. So don't be afraid 
it, it, to go make something, practice your script, record it, have good sound and light, but it, it can be from your iPhone and use that as your own leverage. Even if you're a single agent, give yourself that breathing moment in the listing appointment to say, watch this video while I walk around. You catch a breath. Maybe you return a text when you're in the third floor and they're not with you. So find those leverage moments for yourself. And, and I will tell you, we're converting on such a high level because nobody else is doing what we're doing and communicating what we're doing at this at this rate. Mm, love that. Chris, what are your parting thoughts and words and anything else you want to, you know, tell us that you're doing? Well, we didn't get into the investor piece, but I don't know that we necessarily have time now. I hope the other stuff was was good. Here's the uh, here's the last piece. Um, I ramped up really quick and and part of the reason why was one, because I, I talk to a lot of people every single day. One of my buddies, uh, Brent Daniels, has a coaching business called TTP, Talk to People, right? Like, like it's, not, we're, it's not rocket science, talk to people, right? So, so that was one of the things, nobody wants to hear it and everybody's gonna tune me out if I just say talk to more people because that's <laughs> not fun, right? Like that's not whatever, but I'll tell you what, what is fun. Like one of my, uh, when I was learning how to play golf, I had this, uh, this old golf pro that I got, I got par paired up with. And I still remember I was hitting the ball, just swinging as hard as I could and just smashing it into the woods every time. And I remember he came up to me and asked, and he fixed my grip and uh, he's like, I'll swing it like that. And I swung it and, and it went right down the middle of the fairway. And uh, he's like, now, how do you feel about that? And I was like, it feels a little uncomfortable. And he's like, well, do, do you like having it feel a little uncomfortable or you're like hitting the ball in the woods every time? And I was like, okay, <laughs> fair enough. And then that's the same thing. You know, talk to a lot of people. Do you like feeling uncomfortable or do you like having an empty bank account? That's the real question, right? Like just do it. The second thing um, that I'll throw out there is this. You've got to educate yourself. Like none of these things are going to be rocket science, but, but educate yourself. I'll tell you, there is, I, I still remember another leveling up that happened with our team was my wife asked me this question like a couple of years ago. She's like, does everybody on your team understand the price you pay for education? She's like, you know, because there's literally not a day that goes by where I'm not listening to an audio book. You know, I just finished, uh, you know, I was listening to my audio book this morning, um, talking to goats about the greatest of all times, right? Like, like was listening to that, was listening to podcasts um, every single day. There's not an hour, there's not a day that I don't have at least an hour of personal development. And I think everybody wants to, you know, what, it, what is it? Nick Saban says, everybody wants to be the beast, but nobody wants to do what the beast does, right? And so that's the whole thing. Everybody wants to have six pack abs, but, but nobody wants to skip the extra pizza, right? Like that's the whole thing. And, uh, you know, for us, you gotta you like get on, you know, I have a podcast, Uncommon Real Estate, shameless plug, do that. You know, right here, you're listening to awesome education. You know, listen to that, like, like do this stuff every single day, put in an hour of day. And I'll tell you, originality is forgetting who you stole it from. It really, really is. Originality is forgetting who you stole it from. So you're going to be there at a listing appointment and something genius is going to come out of your mouth and you're going to say, where the heck did that come from? And then you realize it was something you listened to a week ago and it had just kind of flew, flowed out of your mouth. Our whole coming soon thing was from that. Like basically it just comes out. It's uncommon real estate. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, I know. I just realized that as you were, keep going. <laughs> but but yeah, that that's the whole thing. I know we've only got a couple minutes left. So, so that's the whole thing. Talk to a lot of people. Don't let a day go by. Pick your number. Is it 20 conversations every day? Is it 40 conversations every day? But don't give up on it. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your dreams. Just do it. And then also make sure every single day you're investing in yourself. You know, it's, I know it's cliche, you know, KW is speak, but your business will grow to the extent you grow. It really will. So definitely invest in yourself. Don't let a day go by where you're not taking in podcasts and uh, teaching and audiobook and just things that will change how you think. I love that. I, I love that so much. Thank you guys so much. I took a ton of notes today. And we have so many links and everything. So we'll, we'll send all those around. I literally bought both books that you mentioned during the podcast, literally bought them. They will be delivered tomorrow because I don't mess around. I love everything you had to say and I want to read those books. So I appreciate it. There are two topics and two topics only right now, my friends. One of them is getting inventory and the other topic is how to win in multiple offers with buyers. Those are the only two topics we will be covering over the next few months. There are no other topics right now. So next week, we've got Kate Conroy back for an encore performance. She was one of my absolute favorite guests of the year last year. 
She is one of the most unbelievable uh, buyer's agents in the country. I really mean it. And for me to say that, I interview a lot of people. She is going to tell us about her ABC script and all sorts of amazing things. I have Carrie Ann Kent coming on, who blew up the Pivot Shift Ahead page with what she's doing. She tripled her business uh, last year. So I asked her as a last minute. She just confirmed that she's coming on for next Wednesday. So we're going we're gonna to focus on a little bit of database and a lot of how to win in multiple offers, how to get by your brokerage agreement signed. And I can't thank this week's guests enough. I really can't. Chris Craddock and Vanessa Pollock, you guys, you just threw it down. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Thanks to all regulars. Thank we'll see you next week. Here. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks, Bye.